I gave Edna Mode a little makeover. I made her a little renaissance coat. Look at her, isn't she cute? She's so cute. <laughs> uh, let me go back a little bit and explain to you exactly what happened. I actually sat down to edit this video about basting and how to baste. Basting stitches are your secret weapon to conquer challenging cats with ease. Imagine having an extra pair of hands effortlessly taming the trickiest of sh And they're not just for holding fabric together. They can mark seam lines, create beautiful gathers. But in order to enjoy these benefits, there are some things you need. Oh, it was so boring. I could barely keep my eyes open. Very well it may have been that I was not able to stay awake because I was coming out with a cold. And as I was sitting there in my fugue state. I thought, well, there's gotta be a way I can make this interesting. So I thought, well, I could possibly make this more interesting to people if I showed how these stitches could be used in an actual real world application. But unfortunately, I just, I'm not working on anything right now where all of those stitches would be utilized. Useless. Come, 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 come. Go, confront the problem, fight, win. It will be bold, dramatic, heroic. Okay. No capes. This linen is functioning as an underlining and there is my fashion fabric. So what I want to do is I'm gonna stitch these together. So I'm gonna baste them. And this is, again, it's gonna be temporary. It's gonna stay until the end. So what I do first is I line them up. And honestly, that's that's good enough. It They are probably not going to stay the same size in the end. That's just the nature of fabrics when you have two fabrics that you're stitching together one of them is going to end up smaller than the other so you don't really want to stitch the edges together but what we're going to do is we're going to sew from the front side so this is my center front and that's where I'm going to start out I'm going to stitch along my center on the inside of the seam allowances and I'm going to start from the neck edge but I'm going to start a little bit in because I want to leave myself a little space as I'm going I'm going to gently be smoothing the fabric out ahead of where I'm sewing. So the way I like to do that is I just kind of come in here like this 
And this is going to be an uneven basting. This is kind of hilarious because this is a bit <laughs> overkill for this size of a garment, but normally, you know, you would be doing this in a larger garment. And these can be fairly large stitches. They don't have to be tiny. This, you want to go fairly fast. You want to keep it smooth. You want to keep everything nice and smooth. I'm going to come over here and I'm just going to take a little turn here. I'm going to just take one more stitch towards my hem. I'm going to leave a tail. I don't want to actually put my knot through the fabric because that's going to be really hard to remove. Now this time I'm going to start from the center of my shoulder and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to start up here. I just make sure I'm not too far off, that I've got everything lined up really nicely. Just keeping it on the table, I want to keep it on the table because I want to keep it flat. Because if I have it in my lap or I'm doing it elsewhere, what can happen is if I'm like holding it like this, I'm going to sew it. I'm going to end up having a little curve in it and you don't want that. And then again, I'm going to start towards the shoulder. I'm going to work my way around the arm's eye here, and then I'm going to stitch down to the hem. Again, now for this, we're going to come kind of out this way. And then I'm this one, I am actually going to use more of an even basting stitch because that gives me more control. This is so funny because it's so tiny. Okay, I'm just going to end it there. I only have this little bit here, right? So what I wanna do is I wanna make sure I'm staying above that. So I'm gonna come down towards this and I'm gonna be pulling this way, kind of diagonally and down. And I'm gonna go back to my uneven basting stitch. So now what I want to do, I'm going to put a piece of inner spacing here at the front edge. This is just going to give it a little extra oomph for those closures. And again, I'm just going to put one little pin through it just to kind of hold it down. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do a diagonal based on this one. So this is going to be one that we actually want to keep in when we're done because it's on the inside. So as I do this, I'm actually going to be careful not to catch my fashion fabric as I'm basting. And I'm going to start out trying to get through my underlining and my, and then I'm going to do like a little back stitch here. Then I'm going to come down. I'm just going to diagonal base this on. Diagonal basting, also known as tailor basting, is best for when you want to control several of layers of fabric together. Although it looks a lot like pad stitching, it has a very different purpose, so be careful you're not confusing the two. Again, we're not going to see these stitches. So for this, you don't have to worry about being perfect. So now what'll happen is I fold my front edge over and I'm gonna stitch it down. Next step is I'm gonna stitch my back seams together. Velvet is, there's, let's just say there's a special place in hell for, for velvet. It's beautiful and tempting, but when you go to sew it, it is a pain in the buttocks. What I'm gonna do to make sure that nothing slips out, you're, you gotta be extremely careful with that. I'm gonna pin it first. And everything in real good. Here is a quick tip about sewing with velvet. I am gonna just nail this in. I go first, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna pin along the seam line like I did. Then I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna have pins going perpendicular to that. And that'll nail it in real good while I'm basting it. Velvet is the stuff nightmares is made of. It's gorgeous, Move, moves beautifully. Its movement is also why it makes it a pain in the butt to sew. It's gooey and then it likes to like push the other side around, away from it. Once I've got that done, I can take these ones out. But now it should be pretty darn close, so. 
Oh, now I'm gonna baste a back seam. Since this is gonna be temporary, it's gonna come out after I do my permanent stitch. I'm gonna go ahead and stitch right next to it, pretty much on top of where I did my thread tracing. And because this is velvet, I'm gonna use an even basting stitch. I find that if I take my pins out as a go, they don't get in my way. And I don't get my thread thought, uh, caught on them when I pull it up. You want this to be a relatively small, but fast. You can be accurate and fast, um, and you don't have to worry about how pretty it looks. Because we are really just holding it in place until we can get a permanent stitch in. I'm not gonna tie off because I am literally gonna stitch this next. So here's my thread tracing, it's right next. And so now I should be able to stitch along this line without it sliding everywhere. Let's give it a shot, shall we? Okay. Seemed to work pretty good. Nice even stitch. You can see I did it in a white stitching so you can see that it came out pretty darn good. I didn't have any slippage. I could just pull out my basting. I personally like to leave my thread tracing in because if I ever, if something happens and I have to take it apart or something, I like having those lines in there. So I kind of leave them temp permanent. So. are ridiculously small. It's so hard. I'm basting them together and then I'm gonna stitch around the edges uh, by hand because it's just too small. Everything now at this point is too small to get under the machine. This is my, I thought it'd be quick and easy. Yeah, this is my third attempt to get this done. Um, I have destroyed three little sleeves because they just keep fraying. So I gave myself a really thick seam allowance and basted it together and hopefully this time will be successful. <laughs> Here we go. Is this cute or what? Look at that. It's so cute. It's a little tiny sleeve. It's impossible to make. I had to do it a completely weird way that I would never do. I was making a big garment, but focus. Look at how cute that is. I'm gonna try to set it in. That's gonna be the fun part. Let's see if I can do it.
So that's how I use basting as I'm constructing a garment, typically a tailored garment. You don't need this for all things. It's great for if you're working with a difficult fabric or if you have multiple layers, you have to bind together during construction. Doing a little bit of extra work in the beginning can actually save you a lot of time and frustration as you're working through the project. Another one you'll wanna work on is pad stitching because pad stitching is where you can create shape and interfacing. Interfacing is how you add structure and all of those you need to know how to do basting first. No cakes. I am an artist. You are a tiny god. I used to design for gods. No cakes. Basting is an excellent technique. It really does help to level up your construction skills. The other thing you wanna look at is like the little detail, like how you construct your corners, especially if you're working in a heavy fabric or a fabric that is difficult like velvet. There are steps you need to follow to make sure you wind up with sharp corners. Otherwise, you're gonna end up with lumpy bumpy messes. To avoid that, you're gonna to wanna to watch this video that walks you through how to do those corners properly. Now, I think my next step is I need to make her some accessories. A little hat, maybe a little rough. I don't know. What do you think? Say goodbye, Edna.